Now, what I want to know is who is the fucking monster that decided that they had to do Crown Jewel on a Thursday, meaning that the talent that appeared at Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia on Thursday had to hurry up and fly back over stateside and then of all damn places had to perform Friday night for SmackDown in Wichita, Kansas. You couldn't have done New York or something on the East Coast. Like you threw in a little more travel insult for injury. Like I feel bad for all of the talent. You know, you could say, maybe well, that's what the fuck they get. Karma collects for their asses going to perform in Saudi Arabia. But eh, what country could you look at at this country that doesn't have significant problems with their history and how they treat certain groups. <laughs> Looking at you, Marka. Um, but, yeah. Like, if you were going to watch this show and expect a whole shit ton of uh, long matches and so forth, like, you're insane. You had to know better. And like I said, I feel bad for the talent in this spot because you know, that's a rough deal to make, do that much traveling back and then forth to come back to just perform in Wichita. Ooh, gee. I really wish this show would have stopped after the Roman and Brock segment. Like, that would have been great. Half hour plus of that shit. That's a wrap. <laughs> Don't you wish to? You certainly wish you would have stopped before the main event. That's for damn sure. Um, but everything involving the Roman and Brock segment was great. Especially the thing that matters most is when Roman got in the good, clean, fair shots on Brock. Where Brock started spraying all his fucking farmer's tan into Roman's eyes, blinding him so he could take advantage of him. The Uso selflessly get out from behind the wheel. Said, nope, we haven't drunk yet this weekend, so we're going to go out there and we're going to defend our cousin from these unfair shots by Brock. And we're doing the whole uh, Brock suspended angle. Apparently this angle got Adam Pierce so excited that he was F5'd out of his fucking pants. <laughs> this is really good. Like this is the one thing that WWE at times can still hit pretty well. And that is the big fight feel. And this certainly with these two guys brings that big fight feel, that star power feel to it. You know, we'll see if this is just a temporary thing that they do before a match at Survivor Series. I would certainly hope so. Um, but yeah, like the opener was great. 30 plus minutes of this shit. Like the way you had the whole first segment of the show, you know, the first half of the opener, you know, it was around Roman talking about he wanted to see Rock and old Brock's gone. I beat his ass so bad he went to Twitter. Like that's a fucking classic line right there. And this is almost as good as Missionary John. Like, Roman is killing it this year. Uh, but then you go to commercial, like, actually building the suspense. Like, there were fundamentals of good, suspenseful television programming there. Something you don't always get from WWE any day more. And like I said, you could have done without the rest of the show, frankly. Drew McIntyre versus Sami Zayn. You see Drew with the five-foot sword. Like, what are you compensating for, Drew? We'll go with a lack of charisma. Um, so you had that match. You had... Xavier Woods, King Woods, and his coronation segment. There wasn't a coronation segment for Zelina Vega, was there? <laughs> okay, it just shows how little that actually mattered. Um, you know, cool, like King Woods is king of the ring. Okay, and now what are you going to do with it? I guess that's what it comes down to. You know, even though it was Crown Jewel, we still got to do the rematches from the pay-per-view the day before. So Mansoor versus Mustafa Ali it is. I don't give a shit about either one of these guys, but apparently Mansoor... Had a vicious takedown of Ryback on Twitter. And for that, sir, I salute you. Yes, sir. You also saw several different interviews with the talents that are now new to the SmackDown brand, which is a, a nice way to introduce the talent. You know, you just don't have them randomly fucking appear. You actually pretend like you give a crap about them before you bury them. Um, you know, I won't say any of them were great, but, you know, just from a fundamental standpoint, Although when I saw Angel Garza, you know, I, I kind of got a little bit of a Rick Martel vibe. I can't lie. I wanted him to break out the arrogance spray. Oh, fuck, could you imagine? <laughs> but, you know, those, those are good. If nothing else, they're giving you an initial introduction into the character. Another big notable thing that did happen on this show was the debut of Hit Row. And I don't know if they're quite ready for prime time yet, but they're being put in this spot, that's for sure. Um, if you're going to ask me, like, Hey, what did you think of this? Well, tag team squash match, I am down for. Like, get in, 
Get in your shit and get the fuck out. And that is the best thing to do, and that's what they did here. Do I think that this group actually has a chance, and can they be successful? I think they do. I don't know if I would put them on the same show as New Day, though, honestly. That said, I look at this group and I say, you know what? This group fits so many of the stereotypes that Vince would associate with black people. Like, he thinks every black person raps. He thinks every black person wears those types of clothes or says those types of things or does those types of things. I'm not going to do anything bad. I'm just, I'm pointing out the fact that when you look at Vince, like, at the end of the day, if Vince doesn't buy it, if Vince doesn't see it, if Vince doesn't believe it, it's not happening, period. But you can absolutely point to this group and you could say, you know what? There's enough there for you to see where Vince would actually get behind them. And especially when you look at Top Dollar, like guy, size, former NFL player, we'll look at him and say there could be some future money there. We'll see about the rest of the group, although B-Fab, do B-Fab. So I'm going to say, I actually think that this group has a chance. I actually believe that Vince could get behind them, that Vince could believe in them, that Vince could want to push them. He may have just brought them all up together and then he's going to break off top dollar and then the rest go wherever. We'll see. But, you know, the way they were brought out I thought was well done. I don't think they were absolutely money in like the beginning kind of like introductory, introductory bars that they were spitting. So that was a little off, but yeah, it's not always going to work. But they got a, they got a chance and they got some personality. And this is a brand, this is a company, this is a wrestling business. God forbid, we need some fucking personality. So I hope they make it. We'll see what happens. But I think they have a chance. And it seems like, at least for the moment, that they care about them. Like, the way they presented them felt different. The way they presented them, they wanted to make them feel kind of like rap stars or music stars or artists. Like, they wanted to make them feel like a legit something that you're supposed to take notice of. We'll see how long it lasts. But for now, it was a really good debut for them. We could have done without uh, Shinsuke versus Happy Baron Corbin 50th time, but this time it counts, damn it, till Happy Corbin wins and then nobody's happy and then we get the match again. Oh my God. All the shit you could have done tonight, this is the match you had to throw out there. And oh, by the way, WWE, fuck you! You took broke, bum-ass Baron Corbin Something that all of us wanted to see continue to play out. And you played your own fucking games with it. Now you made Happy Baron Corbin and nobody gives a shit! Way to go, assholes! You deserve all the heat you can get for that. But maybe this week, not as much heat as you get for that t segment at the end with the exchanging of the titles. Oh my god. Like... Am I surprised to hear the reports that Charlotte Flair got asked to leave and that there was an argument and a disagreement between Becky Lynch and Charlotte over how that main event segment went? Oh, hell no. Like, if you think those two bitches aren't playing major backstage politics, I don't know where the fuck you've been. Of course Charlotte wasn't going to do something she didn't like because that's what the fuck she thinks she can do because she's been entitled to do so. And of course Becky's going to want to get her own shit in as much as she can because, again... She's been entitled to do so, made to believe that that is her right to do so. The whole premise of this segment was just so goddamn stupid. It really was. We're going to have them exchange the titles. Can't they just take the belts with them, you change the colors, and we call it a fucking day? Is that so hard? Like, this was a convoluted, contrived-ass thing. It came across like shit. Like, I'm going to drop the belt. No, I'm going to throw the belt. Like, what the fuck was this? And then Becky, of course, saying bye-bye. She'll get her confrontation from Bianca on Monday. Out comes Sasha Banks. And it's going to be her and Charlotte for the umpteenth million goddamn time. But I guess, again, this time it counts, right? Oh, my God. Ooh. As much as I could just blame the talent like Becky and Charlotte here, I won't even go there. Whoever came up with this segment, Vince. Whoever signed off on this segment, Vince. Whoever structured this segment, Vince. Whoever allowed this to go down in the way that it did, Vince. Deserves all of the blame, Vince. 
because this was one steaming, stinking pile of grade A bullshit. It was horrible. Let's never do it again. Like I said, this week's SmackDown, the opener, first 30 minutes plus, fantastic. You pretty much skipped the rest of the show, and I really wish they would have done without it. I feel, again, bad for the talent because, you know, you're coming from that being overseas, going all the way to Saudi Arabia, and then having to come all the way back and perform in damn Wichita, Kansas. Yeah, not a great place to be, but yikes. Rough night. This was not the best show to watch after the first 30 minutes.